Is your problem really such a large problem? For the EU, we made the calculation of 25,000 deaths that would be attributable to only five bugs. We only picked five multi-drug resistant bugs. Okay. But you say 25,000 each year is nothing, right? Well, it's, the, it's the same as traffic accidents. Yeah. It's the same net level. Or it would be the equivalent of two medium-sized airplanes yeah. that would crash every week. Two every week. Every week. And next week, two. Yeah. And That's the following quite substantial. two. It's, it's a lot. It's already out of control. We have 1.3 billion people in India and a country with one of the highest antibody resistance statistics in the world. We have 75,000 hospitals. So you can assume the extent of the AMR problem. Your question was, what will happen if it gets out of control? People will die. Okay, that's we the kind of thing. If we don't we... have antibiotics, people in hospitals will die. Recently, the Jim O'Neill from, uh, the, he's a, actually one of the famous economists from UK, and uh, he, he produced a calculation. If, the, because of the AMR problem, 10 million people will die across the world. I can't exactly say how many people will die in India. Per but year or in total? Per year, per year, 10 million additional deaths will happen across the world till 2050. It's also a, a huge problem in Brazil. You know, it's a, it's a very large country and uh, our uh, resistance is, is out of control and uh, we don't feel that the authorities are doing something in order to prevent it. So it's, it's a huge problem for us. Uh, but I think the population, they, they don't know about that. They know okay. much more about the Zika virus, flu, and other things that also uh, people are dying through this other disease. I think that the importance of things are, are different, although we, uh, we have much more people dying to more drug resistant than to Zika virus, Zika. for instance. Okay. Uh, it's really an endemic situation, an endemic situation in Greece uh, during the last years, particularly during uh, the, from 2005 to 2010, the problem has increased dramatically. And uh, in terms of Kabapenem resistance, uh, it was doubled in uh, 2010. After that, uh, at the end of 2010, at least, we have initiated a nationwide action plan, initiated from the Hellenic, from the Greek CDC. From 2015, the MDR infections uh, is a notifiable disease in Greece. Okay. So this is, this something has changed uh, a lot, and now uh, we have a stable, a steady decrease of the levels of uh, CRE resistance. So you have a decrease. Yeah. This is also connected with the financial problems that we have in Greece. So the antibiotic, con the consumption of antibiotics has decreased quite a bit in the in uh, the in the hostels, yeah. in the hostel settings. I think for the, the problem that is happening in India, happening in, in Greece happening Brazil. in Brazil and many European, European countries, we still don't have a name. We tend to call it CRE, Carbapenem Resistant Natural C. And that's probably the acronym that flies now, but it's not recognized at the same level. Doctors have prescribed uh, abused antibiotics, and that's the reason why they have a problem in India. That's the reason why they have a problem in Greece. That's why they have a problem in Brazil. And that's why we also have a problem, perhaps to a lesser extent, in Belgium. And it's absolutely shocking to see how uh, people swallow antibiotics, how doctors prescribe antibiotics, and how people buy antibiotics without a prescription. And I think that is really one of the biggest problems. And I was actually one of the top hospitals in Delhi two years back, one of the private top hospitals in Delhi, and Abdul knows which one it is. And so they asked me to look at the files of the patients, which I did. And I remember seeing some patients who had no fever, who had no signs of infection, and they had, and this is something technical, they had cholestine, they had meropenem, and had digicycline. And that, that's the reality of the problem. Okay. Because the AMR problem is going to cost the global economy $100 trillion. I don't know what $100 trillion exactly means, but it's a huge number. That will help to con convince your politicians. Probably the most important part of tackling resistance is convincing politicians. And that's where the role of your media come into the picture. Probably media can role, play a bigger role than doctors like us. You can convince politicians, we can't. You can create, you know, superbug, you can make a, a super, super bug. We can't do that. 
Okay, superbugs are global citizens. If you want to control the superbug problem, we all have to work together. So we first sketched the size of the problem, and now you have the task to sketch the complexity of the problem. Since I was learned that it's not just consumption of human beings eating this stuff, but also animals. If you have uh, meat that is produced with a lot of antimicrobials, uh, that then your product gets a bad reputation. Uh, and, and that was actually uh, what, what the, the farmer, the livestock industry and the government were, were worried about. Then uh, the livestock industries and the government actually discussed how, how they could reach uh, a considerable reduction in usage. And even in the Netherlands, we are not there yet. I mean, we had a sizable reduction, but I think there is, there is more room for further reduction, actually. Uh, but this also has to happen in the rest of Europe. We need a level playing field. And actually, uh, we, we need also global initiatives, because also on that level, we need a level playing field for farmers, livestock farmers, in, the, in their economy. The, the solution, I think, we, we don't need any more uh, science to know the solution. The solution is to decrease antibiotic use wherever you're using antibiotics. Reduce that driving force for the evolution of these bacteria. So just use them when absolutely necessary. In, in many cases, we're using them for pure production purposes. We're using them to decrease production prices, to make animals change feed, their feed, to lean muscle mass more efficiently. I mean, this is just an abuse of antibiotics. Other times we're using them to prevent diseases that are occurring because of the way we're raising animals. We're crowding together under filthy conditions and under conditions that would make humans sick. Yeah. We make sick animals and instead of changing that, we just give them antibiotics. Okay. And the big issue and the complexity is that we are living in a global village. So today okay. I'm here, tomorrow I'm in Copenhagen, then after that I'm in China. Coming back from China or from India, my chance in having a superbug in my gut is between 30 and 70 percent, okay. depending on where I'm going. So I'm going to travel, we're all traveling bug carriers like this. So the complexity is that this is truly a global problem. I put, I put antibiotic resistance just below global climate change. Oh really? In terms that of high? threats. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's going to change everything. It's going to change everything from what it feels like to take public transportation and grab a handle for fear of picking something up to what, what procedures can take place in a hospital. It's, it's a massive change in our society. We've relied on antibiotics completely for the last, you know, 60 years. One aspect of the complexity is, are we overusing antiseptics, you know, ah. alcohol or triclosan or chlorhexidine, is that another part of the problem? It's a very complex problem, um, and, and we need problem. seven solutions. We need several solutions. Seven. Just seven. seven. Give, give, give like, me all. Like in seven. First of all, we need more understanding of what's happening. <laughs> then we need to prescribe less. One is to prevent infections better in hospitals and to prevent infections in the community, for example, by vaccination. Yep. The second is we need to use antibiotics better, either by the better prescription, and that was what my colleague saying, but also by better diagnostics. And the third one is we need, in the end, we will need new antibiotics, and we will need to explore our immune system to do a better job in treating, uh, let's say, in killing bacteria. So these are seven approaches that need to be explored simultaneously because I'm not counting on, on any paradigm shift discovery within the coming 10 years which will solve this problem. But the economics of antibiotics is something that needs to be addressed. And there's not one model that fits all, but we need various different models. So the, mod the models need to be able to provide the opportunity to treat the resistance problem you have in Greece and Italy. So it's like putting out the fire. But you also need to have a business model which enables you to have the antibiotic on the shelf available to treat your patient that comes in your clinic with a multi-drug resistant pseudomonas or a carbapenem resistant enterobacteriaceae or acinetobacter or whatever. We, we don't really want to have a model which is linked to cells of antibiotics. We need to move away from that because a model which returning probability of antibiotics should be separated from volume of cells, particularly for a multi-drug resistant uh, priority okay. pathogen. Um, well, it's about prudent use of antibiotics. And that's now uh, more or less 10 years on again. But and I've call heard that, that so often tonight. Antimicrobial yeah. stewardship. Yeah. And we know now that has been. We know how to do it. We know it works and, and it has positive effects. And now the thing is implementing it. And when you 
to talk about implementing, you are talking about changing human behavior, and that's always a difficult one. We are talking about a question of sustainability. We are talking about climate and sustainability. When we're talking about antimicrobial resistance and sustainability, do not use today in order to have tomorrow. And it's a very complex, abstract thing for Homo sapiens. To do something today better in order to have in future, it is complex. We are the only being on this planet that really can think about that, and it's very difficult. I, I know that. Complex thing is we are too complex. We are experts. We're talking about gram-positive, gram-negative, MRSA, CRE. Nobody understands. We have to give it a name. It's the resistance disease. There is a house we live in, and this house is Europe. There are apartments in our house that are in fire. It is Greece, it is Romania, it is southern Italy. Would you say because there is a fire in your apartment, I just closed the door in my apartment, and what we have to do is to go there. There are not countries that collaborate with each other. There are people that collaborate with each other. If we believe that there's a problem in Greece, there's a problem in Portugal, and we don't have a problem here, so why do we stay here? Let's go there. Collaborate bilaterally, people to people. Thank you for being here. Thank you very much for being here. Have a good night. See you tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock.